Welcome back guys and today we are back on the 1953 GMC pickup. We are going to be doing the disc brake conversion and getting that all set up. Also putting the dual master cylinder in and running all the brake lines. Now if you're just tuning into the channel, this is a 1953 GMC pickup that we have been restoring from the ground up. I'll drop a link in the playlist if you want to check out how we got here. It make a lot more sense. But if you're here just for the disc brake conversion, what I have here is the CPP kit for the uh, six lug disc brake conversion, 47 to 59 Chevy trucks. Now this is a really, really complete kit. I'm pretty happy with it. Got our calipers, our calipers, our rotors, our calipers. Put a little light on for you. And uh, the steering arms, which I have painted up. I got the instructions out. We have our dual master cylinder and all of our hoses and hardware. Now this is actually all that they give you for the uh, instructions. This is kind of a basic booklet here that has some, some little bit of helpful stuff, but really they do lack a little bit, but that's fine. We'll be able to get through this. Now, what we are starting with is here. Our spindles are already taken apart, painted, kingpins are done. Like I said, go check out that playlist, guys. But I'll do a flashback right near, right now, of how I tore everything apart, and we'll do it from the ground up. So here's that clip. What I did do already is I put these caps on and I also upgraded the bearings. So these have needle bearings in it already or roller bearings, I should say. Now I put electric tape on this uh, and it's starting to look like it might've been not been the best idea <laughs> because the, without the electric tape, these just slide in and out. There's no grab to it. So what I think I'm going to do this time around is kind of dimple the inside to hold it on. But we'll see. Because those are the caps that are supposed to go on it. And I couldn't find a cap to fit, so that may be the route we go. So it's all new cotter pin already and a new castle nut. But again, I have more stuff for the disc brake conversion, so... Uh, it's gonna get everything new again. And I was trying to avoid that, damn it. I'm just gonna get these four bolts out and leave all of the brake parts where they are. Damn. Now, welcome back. This is pretty much the same thing, except everything's nice and painted and done up, but it's still just the bare spindle. So what we're gonna do now is get our mounting bracket on, get everything set up, and start putting this kit together. All right, guys, let's get it done. Okay, we're just gonna start off by jumping right into it. Now, following the instructions, uh, it does say it wants you to test out, put the bracket on and the caliper to test fitment of the caliper first, market parts. So we'll go ahead and throw the bracket on, which goes on just like this. And from what I can tell from the instructions, you want the, the part that kind of jogs back like this to be uh, uh, facing that way. And then they do give you bolts. It doesn't actually tell you which goes where, but it's of uh, three different lengths. So I'm going to guess where everything goes. Now the steering arm bolts to the back, so I'm guessing that's why there are longer bolts. So let's just go ahead and start with the top. All right, well guys, I immediately made my first mistake. <laughs> I uh, was putting the nuts on the front. Obviously you wanna put the bolts in this way and put the nuts on the back for clearance issues. Plus that just looks cleaner. So I went ahead and flipped them around. Now what we need to, it wants you to do is take the caliper and it doesn't describe very well how these should be set up. So it took me a second to realize how the caliper bolts in, but you take it and it actually goes on the inside 
of the uh, caliper. And that's why the bolts are threaded like that with a gap at the top here because it stops on this side. All right, and now it's in, and all you have to do is really test this way, because as far as the um, travel this way, it'll be limited by the uh, drag link. So we are good, doesn't hit anything, but you're feeling that, that's just the stop. So we're good to go. Now we can take these two bolts back off, this will stay, and we need to get the caliper into paint. And then we'll start on getting the hubs ready for the disc brake system. All right, guys, I was just jamming through and doing the test fit on the passenger side. I wasn't going to bring you in, but we actually do have a problem here. So this is the reason why they want you to test fit is it's bumping up against this uh, spindle stop here, not allowing the travel of the full spindle. So it even says if that happens, you're just going to have to grind it back. I'm actually going to grind the bracket, though, not the stop itself. So I'm just gonna take a marker and mark out right about where it is. So you guys can see that. So then it gives me this mark here. Get you in. So it gives you this mark here. So I'll just come through and kind of grind that out. And what I'm gonna use is a Dremel with a carbide bit. Now this is thick metal. It'd be better if you had like a, a a plasma cutter or something, but I do not. So I'll try the Dremel and see how it goes. The downside is my Dremel is, is just a little cheapy, so hopefully you can handle this. All right, let's get it done. And now we have full clearance. I will grind a little bit back because I think it, it's just too close for comfort in case, you know, we get like load on here and things shift just a little bit. I want to make sure we have good clearance and we're not going to get binding while steering, but I have full range of motion. Let me go ahead and get all these metal flakes and everything out of here before we move it too much more and we'll get this taken care of. All right, guys, before we start with the painting, let's go ahead and get the hub separated from the drum. So the kit that I got utilizes the original hub. Now, what you should be doing is pressing out the studs and then drilling out the rivets, which there's three. I do not have a press. I have access to one, but I don't think we'll need one to take all of these out. So I'm gonna try just to hammer them out. Now, I should have been soaking these in PB Blaster way ahead of time, but I didn't do any of that. So I squirted them down and just going to try to hammer them out. And it's out. Oh my God, that one was so stuck. It was insane. I'm gonna to have to clean that up a little bit. Hopefully I can get something back in. That I am not doing again. Don't do what I did. Hammering it, oh, I got the air chisel out. I got air hammer, whatever, I got it all out. You know what ended up beating it? And I'll tell you what, the one tool on this entire channel that has just dominated since day one on this truck. I pulled out the trusty ball joint service kit. Now, if you've been watching this channel, you know that this beast right here has saved me several times already. And once I realized you get the, uh, 
the uh, rivets out, I have access to be able to use this in this little C-channel to press all of the uh, studs out. So we're going to do it on here. I'm going to show you the right way now. So you get to see my trial and error. Now, if you don't have a press, just go get this. I mean, honestly, if you have a press, you do any kind of auto, get this thing. This thing is awesome. Hands down, never will ever be without one of those. I'll show you how quick this is going to go now. What we're going to do is come over here um, and grind up all the rivets. We're going to punch the rivets out and then we'll use that tool over there to get these out. worth its weight in gold. What is that, a third of the time? Not even, like a quarter of the time required. That is, oh my God, awesome guys. <laughs> so if you don't have a press, now this tool isn't cheap, but you can catch it at Harbor Freight, I don't know, 75 bucks. Comes with a whole bunch of assortments. Cheaper than trying to get a press, and if you don't have room, even better. And I'm not gonna lie guys, it's probably how we're gonna have to put the studs back in. I'll just flip it around and press the other way. <laughs> That's awesome. I am so excited now. Okay, so the next thing that we're supposed to do, and not surprisingly, the GoPro quit on me again. <laughs> I, I swear, guys, you would think after a while that I would start figuring out how to start filming all this, but I'm going to get this camera stuff down. Now, what we're looking at here, and what I was trying to say is we needed to drill out the rivet holes to 3 8 and I went ahead and did that on the hubs already. Now, these are technically ready to go. We could actually start assembling it, putting the master cylinder in, putting the calipers on, and this would be ready to go. But the difference between just doing functional stuff and doing this restoration work, like I'm trying to do here, is paint. So we have to get everything into paint, guys. And that means even the master cylinder, and I know a lot of guys normally don't do that, but the reason I wanna do it is because you always see this, you put it in, it looks awesome, and then you get under the truck or you pop the hood and this thing is all rusted out. So we gotta take everything off here and paint it. We gotta get the calipers and paint, and I wanna clean and put the hubs in paint also. Now, before we start cleaning this up, what I wanted to talk about was, I'm going to actually just take these back seals out. I went ahead and looked it up. I can get some new seals for like $6 each. Technically, you don't need to take these out, but I'm starting to notice like a bunch of crud accumulating and honestly you get something in there you get like a metal shaving or something from when you're drilling these out and your bearing fails while you're driving and it's just a whole thing I'd rather just pay the six dollars or the 12 bucks all together pull the seals pull the bearings clean everything out and then just feel a lot safer might as well just do it right since we're this far in is what I'm trying to say guys <laughs> And then also I got these dust shields that I need to clean up. So basically let's just start breaking everything down, getting it ready for paint and getting this thing looking awesome. Okay, that came out a lot better than I thought it was going to. <laughs> so that was actually really easy. I'm actually thinking that the seals are fine. I could probably reuse them. So I may just keep these and uh, the seals that I already bought, we can save for another time. But it's definitely worth taking these out and just repacking them anyways. And make sure that you keep your bearings with your seals or your races. I don't know why I said seals. And then I see how I labeled this B for beat the heck, which is what I did to this particular hub. So I'll just get this added in there. And that way, we know which one goes where.
And just like that, it is done. All the calipers, brake master cylinder <laughs> looks awesome. <laughs> nice CPP logo. These look great, turned out great. Still got a little bit of grease in there, we'll clean up later. But, man, <laughs> that looks great. What you saw me using was the VHT uh, engine enamel primer. So it's a high temp and their caliper paint. Obviously in the, the satin black that we've been kind of our whole theme for the chassis. I love it. I think it looks great. Uh, I went ahead and rattle canned it uh, instead of using like, you know, my HVLP, just smaller projects. It's a lot easier to do that. Plus you actually can get pretty good results with, with uh, rattle can. As long as you make sure you prime, you prep the surface and you give it proper time to dry. This is actually the next morning guys. Now, obviously we won't be able to use our, our, uh, <laughs> ball joint press friend that we've been using because I actually have to I hadn't thought about it but you have to press the wheel stud through the um, back of the rotor with this on now because I have to do that obviously that won't be able to fit so what I'm going to do is take it over to my uncle's house where he's got a press and we'll press these in properly I mean I imagine I can just hammer these in but <laughs> I rarely have success just hammering stuff together. I usually end up breaking something. And any, like I was saying earlier, anything worth doing, might as well just try to do it right. And if I have access to it, we'll just go do it. So what I'm gonna do is place the hub in like this, place the ring, and just crank down the alignment for it. Uh -huh. All right, that actually looks pretty good. And I'm back. So I went ahead and got all of the wheel studs pressed in, and I'm telling you what, that is definitely the best way to do that. I know you can hammer them in, or I've seen some guys where they just use the lug nuts to, to pull them on, but they went on super easy, super smooth. I went ahead and anti seized all of the, uh, the splines, and the reason I did that is because, well, obviously you have to knock these in and out when you want to change your rotor. So I went ahead and make sure that those were anti-seized. Since I've been home, I went ahead and blue Loctited these. So this is completely ready to go. It's a little greasy inside, but I have been cleaning everything out. All the debris is out, but look what I scored while I was out. I was checking out Facebook Marketplace and I found an original Chrome grill for the GMC. Super excited about this, guys. It's got a little bit of rust in some places but nothing that can't clean up, clean up. I'm really just gonna polish this out. If I can't get it great, I'll even drop it off at a polishers, but I've been looking for one of these. They're brand new, these run like $700. So I'm excited to find it. I love finding original stuff, and I think it's gonna look great for the truck, because you know, you always want that chrome front end. So that was a great find today, I'm super excited. Now, I wanna see these on the truck. So all I have to do now, since these are completely done, is go ahead and and oh yeah, I already cleaned out the wheel bearings too. <laughs> oh, I picked up the seals, like I talked about before. They're a little bit different though. So they have the flange, the one that I took off had a flange. This one doesn't, it does fit though. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and run it. And honestly, it fits a little tighter to the, uh, the rear bearing anyways. So I'll go ahead and go with it, but I did like the flange. Oh wow. Um, these already been cleaned out, so we just need to grease them, throw these on. Put the calipers on and we will have disc brakes on the truck. One thing I do want to say about this grill though, guys, the guy that I got it from, his dad had passed away and he was also building a 53 GMC. They did sell the truck, but he found this later on. So that's pretty cool that I get to take this and it gets to live on in my project. So I'm super excited to have this guys. I love the history behind the stuff that I find. Now let's get these disc brakes on. To start this off, what we're going to do is Regrease the uh, wheel bearings and we'll start with the rear that way I can put the seal in and obviously you can't put the front in until you get it on this actual spindle So I just went and got this cheap thing you pick it up at Home Depot I think I got it on Amazon for like seven bucks. <laughs> it makes it so much easier than trying to just pack it by hand And all you do is just put it in the center 
run this down. I think everyone's pretty familiar with this anyways. And then there you go. This got a grease zerk here. Hook your grease gun up. And then just pump it till you see it pop out of the actual bearings here. And there it is. And there was some old grease in there, so it's pushing that old grease out too, which is kind of nice. We'll pump a little bit more. And now you know it's nice and greased up. Put a little bit more grease in here. And you got all this grease here. Grease up the outside, real nice. Literally cannot have too much grease as far as I'm concerned. I got close though. Tap the seal in. There we go. Now we can take it over to the spindle. All right, let's put a little grease on the spindle. And we have our dust shields. It doesn't say anything about reusing these, but I'm gonna go ahead and reuse them. What I did was I painted the back because they were pitted so you could tell that they were getting an intrusion. I left this because I didn't want any paint flaking off and kind of getting inside the bearings. So put a little bit of grease in there. Wipe that off later. And that should technically go first. Now let's finally get these disc brakes on. Slides right on. Just like that. <laughs> oh man, well uh, my camera decided to put its head down to take a nap. So all I did was <laughs> get the bearing in and um, put the castle nut on. I'm actually just, I'm just putting it on. Time has come for caliper installation. <laughs> I know I keep saying it guys, but I am excited. Okay, now it gets installed on the inside there. So let's go ahead and get the brake shoes in. Should actually just slip on. Let's see, maybe when I get it bolted down, it'll even out a little bit. Technically it should be it, but there's way too much drag. Hmm. You know what? Let me crack the bleeders. Maybe there's air in that piston. Man, that is <clears throat> stuck. Wow. Okay. Compress the piston a little bit that way. No. That's better. That is a lot better. There we go. I'll leave it loose for when we need to breed the, bleed the breed. <laughs> when I need to learn how to speak English, bleed the bleeders. 
Or bleed the brake lines is probably the easiest thing to say. All right, there you guys have it. <laughs> it's done. Man. Well, actually, it's the next day. I had some stuff I had to take care of. But what I did do is go ahead and get the passenger side done. And that went in in like, I mean, not lying, maybe five minutes. It is so much easier to do something when you've already done it before. I should probably start doing one side and showing you guys the others. That way I don't always look like I don't know what I'm doing. But I did, um, before I put it on, I uh, cracked the bleeder, then compressed the piston, and then tightened the bleeder, and that went on really easy. Turns really nice. I didn't do that with this, but it still spins really free now. So, anybody, you know, having that problem, just make sure you bleed the air out of the bleeder first. So we got that done. What I want to try now is I need to try a tire on here. Because as I'm looking over the, well, sort of instructions here, uh, it's supposed to say uh, this kit only works with 15 and up inch wheels. And then I read before that you really need 16 inch. So I actually picked up 16, 16 inch rims for this, which you guys have already seen. Those are the old artilleries. But I was looking here in the tiny little space where it says warning. <laughs> How small. It actually said drum brake wheels were not made with disc brakes in mind, so there may be wheel caliper clearance problems. So before installing this kit, make sure your wheels fit the brake assembly. Although I don't know how you'd make sure if it wasn't already installed. <laughs> so guys, let's get a tire, let's get it on here and see if it actually fits. Plus, just see how it looks. Just gonna put three lug nuts on. It won't even turn. Oh man. All right, this is what's going on. Let me just put some light on for you. So it's hitting, yeah, right there. Uh, everywhere else seems to be pretty good. So even down here, we've got clearance. So it's just in that one spot. I'm trying to think of my options here. I really want to run these rims, guys. So these are the original Kelsey Hayes. They do have this ring on them, but I'm actually just going to pop the ring off. There, it's held on with a couple tack welds here and here. You just pop these off, and this will come right off. And then you can put clips for a hubcap. I really want to put some uh, GMC hubcaps on it, like that were original to the truck and run this particular rim. I just like the way that looks. And I love that this is like, it's like an old 40s, 1940s rim. It's, you know, earlier than the truck, but more period correct. I mean, I just really like the idea. It keeps the skinny tire, which is cool. I kind of like that look just for this truck, just because obviously that's how they had them. I'm not gonna run these tires though. I'm actually gonna end up running a more aggressive tire because I want it to look, you know, more like a truck. But we got a problem. Well, that really sucks. There's not much we can do about it though, but really the only option is to grind those calipers. We'll be trying to do that later. I did go ahead and test fit that side. That actually touches in two different places. So there's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? It's just part of, I, it's not really hot rodding for what I'm doing here, but you know, customizing in any way, shape or form. Now, what we have to do is put start with uh, the brake lines and getting that brake master cylinder in, which is still over here looking amazing. But why I keep pointing to this stuff over here is this is the brake master, cyl master cylinder bracket and the last little bit of parts that we need to paint to finally finish out the chassis parts. Now, this actually, I've been using a rust encapsulator. If this is your first video on the channel, we've been, we did all of this and we used a rust encapsulator and then a Eastwood chassis black. But as you can tell, this almost looks sandblast. And what I did was I left all of these parts in um, evapo rust. So there really isn't any rust on it. This is just a bunch of grease buildup. So what I'm gonna do, and you really need the rust encapsulator to stick to rust. So like I said, what I'm gonna do is put an epoxy primer on it and then we'll do our Eastwood chassis black. So let me go ahead and just get these cl uh, cleaned up. We'll do some epoxy primer. We'll get these in the chassis black and then let them dry so we can start assembling our master cylinder. 
and I'll contemplate on what to do here. <laughs> Let's get started, guys. Man, these came out so good. Look how clean that metal is. I don't think I've ever seen steel quite, it almost looks like cast aluminum from here. That looks so good, I love evapor rust. I'm telling you, this stuff, it's up here. Where You guys have all seen it, I know you have. Oh, and there's a mess. <laughs> there it is, I forgot that I left the lid open. So evapor rust, this stuff is awesome. Oh, it takes care of everything. Now, I got it all cleaned up and it's ready to go. Now, what we're gonna be using is this direct to, pro direct to metal epoxy primer. And it's mainly just because I had it. You can use any kind of primer you guys want. I really like epoxy. If you seal it right, never rusts again. And if you haven't seen my other videos, I'll just brush by it. I use a degreaser. This stuff's like a dollar fifty. It works amazing. It's awesome. It's literally called awesome. It's under all the grease, <laughs> the label. A little bit of this to clean off the uh, residue from the awesome, and then I use a little bit of glass cleaner. Now I. Probably won't do that combo for say when I actually do the cabin stuff, I'll actually get some wax and grease remover, but it works really great for parts. And then a red scotch bright bread had to scuff it all up. finished everything we needed out. This is gonna have to dry for a couple days. So while everything's drying, we can finally put on the tie rod. And I have that already set up and ready to go here. What I already did was put both ends on for the new tie rod and tie rod bar. And also I went ahead and uh, put anti-seize on both. Way, way too much, I swear. I never get the proportions right. Now, this obviously um, is for you know, moving the wheels at the same time, but also for the uh, alignment is the word I'm trying to find. So this is for the, your toe in and toe out. To get it close when we first set up, we're not gonna deal with getting it perfect today. I just wanna get it in so I can move the wheels uh, at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the old tie rod. And then I just need to measure end to end because these ends are obviously a lot different. And I already went ahead and measured it up, but it's about, well, let's see here, hold on. Push that out a little bit. Seems to be about 47 and a quarter. So, what I'll do is I'll measure center of each bolt and we'll go 47 and a quarter across and then we'll go ahead and try to drop it in. The thing to be careful with, and this is what the book says, is I need to literally count the threads on each side and make sure those are even because you want that bar to be dead center on the ends. So you don't want one end further out than the other. Even though it's 47 and a quarter across, you'll have more threads on one side than the other, and that's not what you want. So let me put you on the uh, tripod. We'll get that all sorted out and drop this and drop it in. All right, now all you gotta do is run down the castle net. So I got it to 47 and a quarter. Looks like it tracks right. It's actually pretty close, I can tell. What do you think? She's, what do you think, Pepper, huh? Is it close? Is it close? And you can actually run these down, get it nice and tight, because to adjust it, all you need to do is undo the nut on each side, and you can just twist the bar in or out to adjust it. There we go, come on. Couldn't find a torque spec for this though, so we're just gonna get it nice and tight.
And bam! We have a wheel that spins. All that you hear right now, that's the brake shoe dragging on the, uh, the rotor. But we have clearance. And it's got a decent amount of clearance. Let me show you guys. And there you have it. See guys, the clearance is actually pretty good. It gives me, uh, I'd say 16th of an inch almost. And maybe a little less, but plenty of room for the caliper. There's no rubbing. And then obviously once it's completely bolted down, you're not gonna see anything. Or it's not gonna move is what I should say. And uh, I had to take a little bit more than I thought I needed to take back, but we got it all done. And you guys saw me putting the towel, trying to keep everything. <laughs> A little bit cleaner. It was a complete feeble attempt. It was terrible. And at one point I just kept doing it because it was making me laugh while I was doing it. But I got it done. I'll go ahead and knock out the other side, guys. And um, then I'll just I'll just take them back off and repaint them and put them back on. What I was really surprised by was when I was kind of grinding off at first, it took a little bit to get that paint and primer off. So I'm really happy with the way that the paint is going to hold on that. So it's a good way to test it. Like I said, finish up the other side. Pull them, paint them, and uh, I'm going to wait till the other stuff dries. And when that's done, I'll bring you guys back and we'll start getting the rest of this done. See you then. Everything's done now. So it's been a couple of days actually. So I already have everything taken off, painted. Everything looks really good. I'll bring you in. You can tell here that the shiny part, let me put a light on for you. That the shiny part obviously is where we were grinding. Hi, girl. And over here where it's porous is where it was. But it came out good. I like how it looks. You can see definitely that a lot of meat was taken off right here. It was pretty uniform thick all the way across before, but it's definitely got a lot of meat left, so I think it should be fine. That side's already taken care of, wheel fits great. I did go ahead and research this, you know, after the fact that I ground it out. Turns out it's a common problem. All you need to use is the stock 16 inch wheels because the stock 15s won't work. And they make wheel spacers for this. <laughs> Actually $40 shipped to your door. I could have had them had I looked at it, but we went ahead and did this for free and hopefully this holds up. I saw some other guys on the forums had done this, so I'm not too worried about it. And if these calipers end up failing in some way, we can go ahead and just get the spacers and get them done, guys. All right, now what do we have to do? We're gonna come over here. I have this uh, bracket all painted up. Man, it came out good. It's definitely a lot shinier than the satin black's supposed to be. <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm guessing that I didn't shake the uh, the quart mix too well when I bit, when I first started using it. Basically all the stuff that makes it shiny was at the bottom when I finished out the can, but it's fine. We're good to go. So I have everything here. I have my uh, pedal, all the stuff that I need to, need to have to put it back together. And I've already started to uh, reassemble the master cylinder. I have all the parts and stuff on it. It looks really good. I'm glad with how that came out. That's actually satin black. <laughs> So we'll get that bolted up over here. We'll get all the brake lines ran and that should be a video guys. All right, let's get it done. All right guys, let's get it installed. And should just slam right in. Now I'm gonna go with a brand new grade eight hardware. Like I said before in other videos, I'm gonna replace every nut and bolt mainly because everything was rusted completely. I mean, some bolts were just, there was nothing left of them. So I have 7 16th grade eight and then I also have Brand new giant 5 8 lock nut for the bolt here. All right, let's get started. You saw me put thread lock, thread lock. I can never talk when I'm on camera. And I sees on here, which is the exact opposite. Because I like to put anti seize on anything that if it's seized up, I would have, if and I had to cut it off, would ruin the bracket. Bolts and stuff like that, if you cut these off, you can just replace them, it's not a big deal. So I try not to worry about those. Anyways, let's go ahead and see if I can figure out how to get this whole pedal back together. Man, it's nice. That whole trying to get comfortable on camera thing is a real, real thing, guys. All right, so washer, I think, if I remember. And then this has a bushing inside, which actually looks really good. So I'm glad I didn't have to try to figure out how to replace it. And this gets greased, but I'm just oiling it for assembly. There, and then 
set that there and this is just a tension spring followed by one of these clips can you see that i think this tab goes yeah and the goal is to knock that back and under yeah definitely wanted to get it on before there was too much tension I think that should be good and I put one with the 45 so it should have decent access to it. Alright. Now what I did is if you can kind of see where this definitely isn't centered in this circle here or this opening is because I shifted this as far as much as this would allow. So the master cylinder holes are slotted like all master cylinder holes. So I use that slotted to move it this far over so that I can try to make as much room for the transmission as I can, mainly with those stainless steel lines popping out over here. Now we're gonna try to hook up that rod and try to make it even with that going on. I'm trying to see the best way to do this. Now if that goes in like that. Huh. Well, that don't make no sense. All right, well, <laughs> I figured it out. And to be clear, I never claimed to know what I was doing. So <laughs> this was on backwards. So I had to take it off, take that lock nut on, we were lock washer we were talking about before, and it was a pain in the butt to get it back on. It was a fight, but it's right where it needs to be. I've got plenty of travel. Actually, I need it probably closer to like right here. So there's like plenty of room to adjust now. Because I looked back at old videos and I saw that the brake pedal runs on the slant of the cab like that. So it's all flipped around, ready to go. I only have one spacer in there. So it comes with two. I took out the big one. The little one's perfect. It's got a nice line straight to it. And I had to go for the smaller bolt too. They give you, they give you a large and a small bolt. <laughs> wow. Anyways. So let's go ahead and get this on. And what I'm gonna do is just grease this um, groove right in here. That way when it, well, it will eventually rust out. It doesn't rust too bad. And that way you can maintenance this boot and stuff like that. Then we'll start bleeding it and then start running brake lines, guys. So let's get it done. All right, everything is all set up. I've adjusted the uh, pedal. It's nowhere in, probably near where it needs to be, but it looks like in the proximal location it'll be, I didn't really run down these uh, jam nuts. I just kind of left it here so that we could bleed the system. Now, what we're gonna do is basically use this whole pedal to bench bleed it. I figured it'd be a lot easier to do it this way with the cab off instead of trying to lock it down in a vise or something like that. All right guys, just like everything that I do, it took way longer than necessary, but it's finally all bled. I'm getting no air out as I actuate the pedal and no more air in the lines, so we are good to go. Now, I'm gonna leave it like that because I don't want it to just gravity bleed onto my floor while I hook up the brake lines. So, now we have to do brake lines, guys. And I wanted to get that bled before brake lines because I wanted to make sure I had no issues before I started trying to see where I was gonna put my brake lines. So, what we have here is the NICOP stuff. This isn't copper, like I know a lot of guys um, get mad about. This is that NICOP stuff. I really like it because it's cheap, it doesn't rust, and it's super easy to bend. But what I will be putting over it is stainless steel rock guard because it is kind of soft. It's more susceptible to rocks coming up and kicking it and hitting it. So you put this rock guard on it, stainless steel, works great. I have the 3 16 for the front line and quarter inch for the back. I have all my fittings, the stuff for my proportioning valve, my rubber hoses, and last but not least, proportioning, oh, I'm sorry, residual valves. So I have, what does it say? Somewhere on here probably. Yeah, so I have two pound for the blue. So that'll be for the front and the red is going to be the 10 pound for the back. And you only really need this, see 10 PSI. You only really need this if you are having the floor mounted like I am. 
I'm also got this tee. I'm actually really excited to use this tee because it was one of the parts that came with the truck. The brakes on that truck were terrible. I mean, stuff was welded. They routed weird. I mean, it was crossover. Nothing made sense. So I redid it when I got it, but this is one of the tees that they used. And you know, I love reusing the history of the truck. So we're gonna be doing that, guys. Now, I'm no expert to any of this. This is only gonna be my third time running brake lines. So we're gonna go ahead and put you on time lapse, knock it out, and see how this turns out. Let's get it done. All right, guys, I'm starting on the back side here. And I've run my quarter line, kind of bent it up, as you guys saw a little bit in the time lapse. <laughs> and I got a little fitting on here. None of the hoses actually take the uh, 7 16 fitting for the quarter inch. So I got an adapter, which those are expensive, like $6 for that little thing. And I think I'm bent up good here. So I'm just going to use this little cheapy flare kit. I can just stop dropping everything. And... Um, anything fancy <laughs> did i drop something else again that's that's awesome all right where are we quarter inch quarter inch speak to me quarter inch so we just find the line as you guys saw i uh, forgot to put the fitting on and then I realized that I couldn't flare it with all the bins that I put in it. So <laughs> I redid all of it, but it put a really nice flare on it. Uh, let me see if I can bring it into you guys. It's actually pretty good. That's why I really like about this line too. It's super easy to flare. And what I ended up doing now is just putting this 90 right here and then a gradual bend. And it actually kind of looks a little better that way anyways. And we will just get it tied in. Holy crap, guys, that, I had to stop filming. Um, I ended up running into a ton of problems. I, I, it's all done now, but it took me days, yes, days with an S to actually plumb all those brake lines. I ran into so many problems, so many things that I didn't figure out or do right that I just had to keep, uh, yeah, I was just, let me finish this out and bring you home, bring you back, guys. Like I was breaking things, I forgot things, I broke things to feel better about breaking things. <laughs> it, was, it was a good time is what I'm saying. Oh, but everything is done. I'll go ahead and bring you in and show you what I did and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll bleed these brakes with you know no leaks, which probably isn't gonna happen. And uh, we'll close this out guys. All right, let me show you. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll show you the first debacle. So you saw me run this brake line in and I already have it all strapped in. We got the uh, residual valve in. And then if you remember, this cross member was not in. So I put one brake line in and then hated that brake line, redid it again so it looked better. Then forgot I needed to put the cross member in. Put the cross member in and then ended up with this. Max is really happy with how this brake line came out, guys. Really nice, good bends and ends right there. And the good thing about this master cylinder being frame mounted is I don't have to worry about any of the coils. It's got a nice slant to it, so I don't, it should be guarded by this cross member. We should be good. <laughs> Let me show you the iterations of this. I have uh, the first one, which I, I don't even know what I was doing. That's just awful. <laughs> then I had a second one, which actually looked pretty decent. I actually messed that bend up at the end, but and then we forgot the cross member, and then I made this atrocious thing. <laughs> I, there was a learning curve, guys, there was a learning curve. You know what I ended up started doing, which everyone tells you to do, is I started using wire to create my bends. So then we have our bend here for the front, which comes out real nice into our uh, two pound residual valve. And then um, I still need to uh, use the clamp I have there, but I'll clamp that down. Over here, I, uh, I have it teed out. Now this T <laughs> was another problem. So the T uh, is meant for a quarter inch length. Well, it has seven sixteenths fittings. Now I was like, okay. So I went and found, I only had two of those and I needed three. I searched 
every parts store in the area. And I'm in SoCal, so only saying that because it's densely populated, a tons of parts places. Nobody had those for some reason. And I had to put them on order, so I had to wait for those. So I finally got those in, so that went in, and then all bent around. See, I still have that, uh, that rock guard. I really like that stuff. Came around over there, and then this was a straight shot, straight over. Once I started using the wire buck, guys, or not a buck, the, the wiring, a wire to trace it out, you know what I'm saying. Made it a lot easier, so do that. Uh, I got all the fittings. I already have the master cylinder uh, all hooked up to the uh, proportioning valve. We are ready to go. I mean, I can pump this pedal, but not much is happening. So what I need to do is go ahead and bleed the brakes. I don't think I'm going to attempt to do this on my own. I may bring my fiance in to help me. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Not, I'll try to attempt it on my own, but we'll see you guys. All right, let's get these brake brakes, brake, 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 brake. And what I meant by wire was using wire to lay it out of how your brake line's going to go, getting all your bins into the wire and then bringing it over to your brake line and then tracing it out there. That's what I was trying to say when I was getting tongue tied. When I said I broke things, I broke my flaring tool. So the little nub that goes on the, the 3 sixteenths line, this, that broke clean off. So like if I could, you know, grab it out. <laughs> that broke clean off. So I had to go get more of those. It was a good time guys. All right, let's get these brake brakes bled. I don't know why that's so hard for me to say and finish this out, guys. I have a bottle set up on the front and a bottle set up over there on the back. Since it's a dual, ma dual master cylinder, I can bleed both at the same time. And then I have my fiance here who is going to be helping actuate this. I was going to do like some kind of ratchet strap to hold this down, but since she's here and she supports everything I'm doing, <laughs> she got stuck helping me. All right, let's bleed these brakes and I'll bring you back when it's done. And just like that, we have working disc brakes. Shut it easy. Done. And move it solid. You can hear the drums actuating in the back. I still am going to jump in and go through those and make sure they look good. Although I already went through them about a year ago, so I know they're solid. Just, you know, make sure none of the uh, wheel cylinders are leaking, anything like that. I have no leaks in the system, which is crazy surprise to me. Also, uh, I did strip out the bleed screws in the back, but we got those swapped out pretty quickly and uh, everything works great, guys. I'm super excited. Now, I know some of you are thinking, why well, go ahead and bleed brakes and get a mask so all that, and I don't have an engine, a trans, cabs off the truck, all this stuff seems way ahead of it. And you're right, I did get a little ahead of myself here, but I did that for a few reasons. One, I wanted the uh, brake lines ran because I had to pretty much make them all myself. So I wanted all the stuff out of the way to do that as I'm still kind of getting used to how to do everything, guys. And then also, um, I wanted to make sure I can figure out the best room for the transmission. I still may have to change some stuff over here, swaps, master cylinder and stuff like that. I'm aware because no one really makes a kit with the uh, hydromatic transmission in mind. So that's gonna be something I have to be aware of. But the big reason why I wanna do it is because next, well actually, next would have been the rebuilding the transmission, putting the drive line back together and getting everything up to here done in the chassis. But I'm still waiting on some parts of the hydromatic. So we're gonna jump over here next, next week and start on rust repair. I think if we have a plan like that, we can kind of go with it. So rust repair, then finish the transmission, put the drive line in, finish up the end of the bottom of the cab, get it all done, bolt the cab down, and then we'll be rolling from there. Pound out the cab. Finally, hopefully soon, I think at the end of this month, I get the engine back from the machine shop and we can talk about that, guys. Long story short, a, long, a lot of stuff coming, a lot of plans, I'm super excited. Thank you for the four or five of you that have subscribed. I do appreciate even the little bit of uh, support that you guys are giving me. And uh, I'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care.